Greetings, and welcome to Transport Fever 2. This is the second part of the Cargo Start tutorial, which assumes you've set up a ship line, making some money. We've paid off all our loans, and we're going to start with about 3 million in the bank to build our first train lines. Now, the next set of industries you utilize is quite important, as trains are extremely expensive to buy and run. As we'll see, each train is going to cost around $1.5 million, and the tracks will also add to that figure. We're going to try to look for a route that will reuse cars as much as possible. Of course, one golden route is the crude oil, oil fuel production chain, since it uses tank cars for all three legs of the run. Most other routes will use different cars, but we're going to use wood, lumber, and tools, which reuses some cars, but not all of them. It's to kind of give a realistic estimate of what you can expect, and so you won't have to worry about a so-called perfect setup. So what we're looking for, of course, uh, industries that reuse cars, as we talked about, we can go logs, which use the state cars to the lumber, which also uses state cars. And then tools are going to switch to, I think it's box cars, but we'll see. Then the industry buildings that are relatively close together. And then the city that demands the final product. And that's really important because without that, the whole chain collapses. So here we have two cities. We've got Pepston and Iria, both in range of, uh, of the tool making facility. And lastly, easy terrain. Uh, this is a relatively low uh, elevation map. You can see some hills, but most importantly, there's no uh, water crossings involved and we don't need to go through mountains. All right, so let's get started on this. And what I'm going to do is we're going to leave the game. Uh, we can either let it run on regular speed or triple time speed so we get more money as we go along. I think we'll just run it at regular speed for now. Uh, and the day is paused so that we have vehicles right from 1850. Um, so what we're going to do is we have this really nice sort of diamond shape here where we have logs that can go to the sawmill and then planks that'll go to the goods uh, or the tools factory, I should say. And then those tools can either be shipped to Pepston or to Iria. Uh, and then the trains can go right back here, do a little triangle for the stake car trains and then have another single train going to Pepston and over here. Now there is another lovely wood forest over here. Well, wood forest, yes. I was gonna say wood mine, but it's actually a forest um, over here that we can add to that. But I wanna start off with this triangle first. Now, it's really difficult to estimate how much we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is put a calculator on screen and we're gonna add up all of the little bits and pieces here that we build. Okay, so let's start first with a train station. So we'll go to two, which is trains. Now, again, these are going to have to be connected to the road, connected to the uh, industry. So make sure that we put them close enough for that. So let's start off with a cargo station right here. Let's see, get a proper rotation on this. Uh, we only need one track. Good. 160 meters. Yeah, we could go a little bit shorter. I think we have enough money to do it regularly. So let's just add that. And that's going to be 175,000. I'm just going to go ahead and add them up on screen as we get them going. Okay, so our next stop here is the sawmill. Now, do we want to have two tracks for this? I think it might be worth it. So let's go ahead and add this one as well. And number two, I like to use the hotkeys for this. Let's add two tracks here. We don't have to. In fact, should we go for the bare bones method? Why not? Let's just go bare bones and make sure that we can do this at kind of a lower budget level. Let's go ahead and put this one right here, uh, close enough to the road, 184,000. Okay, let's move on to the next factory, which is the tools factory. Now, this one is a bit special because I want um, I want this loop to be on the inside track. And for that, I need to make three different platforms, I think. So we're going to make three. And there's a very specific reason I want three tracks here. Let's just turn this around. All right, we want three platforms. This is going to cost a mountain of money, 400,000. But I think it's going to repay itself. So let's just place this in here, uh, maybe like this. 
that should be fine. 432,000. Now the reason we're going to this expense is I want to have one of the lines being on the very inside track. And then I want to have another track going from here to there, uh, possibly. And then I want another track to go from here to Pepston and then also out the side to Iria. I think we can use one track for both of those because I only want to load one train at a time as they're coming in. I'm not sure if I need the second wood track, but it will be faster unloading if I have it. Okay, and then the last station we're going to put right now is going to be at Pepston. We'll go ahead and uh, make the road going out here. I think we'll probably need it. Let's find out where they demand the goods. Ooh, right up here. Okay, they want us to sell them some tools up here. All right, that brings us to a grand total of 964,000, nearly a million dollars just for the train stations. Okay, there we go. I wanted to kind of come up with a figure that we could use to plan, uh, and that is that. So let's connect the inner triangle first, and we'll find out how much we spend on this as well. Um, let's go again to our rails and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to laying these rails. You can do it in small pieces, but I'm going to do it in big pieces and we're going to find decent ways of doing this. So what this is doing, it's creating a whole bridge here, but we don't actually want that. We want to lower this track. So we're going to use uh, M or N to lower it and you can see the money. Uh, how much it costs going up and down. So I suggest you use the lowest one. Looks like our lowest is 244,000. Let's just check this track. It looks to be okay. Just slight dips here and there, but nothing major. I think this is going to really do well for us. And it's very level. We have nice and a nice curve here. Yeah, the speed limit does not change at all. This is looking really good. All right, now for the next leg. Let's click this one here and take it to the innermost track. There we go, that one. It says 546, but it looks like it's going a bit uphill there. I definitely don't want that. So let's lower it. This is the wrong lowering button. 215 sounds about right. Sure, we'll take that. Let's click that into place. All right, and now for the third part. Let's make sure that we close this line. So let's go and click this track here. And as we're clicking this around, look at this absolutely huge curve it gives us. I really don't want my trains to use that much time going on that huge curve. So I'm going to say absolutely no. And instead, what I'm going to do is make a shorter radius curve, something like this. Now, it's only going to go 60 kilometers an hour, but I don't really care. That's not relevant to me because this is a spot where they're going to slow down anyway as they're coming into the station. Um, the important part is the long stretch between the stations. So if they're still um, sort of building up speed, I don't really care. That's okay. So we're going to go again here, 60 miles an hour approximately. That's just fine. So that's another 25,000. I forgot how much the other one was, <laughs> but we'll get it all together. Okay, so 25,000. Oh, and that's looking high, but it's building itself into a bridge. So let's lower that. Okay, lower. Oh, wow, look at this. 476. I think 476 is the best we're going to do here. So let's call that 25 and 25 and 476. Okay, so for that amount of track, this kind of a triangle here, nearly a million dollars. I never expected it to be that much. I don't think I've ever actually looked looked at how much this costs, but man, yep, that's uh, it's a thing. So what are we going to do next? We need to connect this to a city or none of this is going to happen. So let's do that. We're going to connect um, the innermost track to the city. So let's see how that's going to work out. Where is the city? The city is over here. Yes, it's right over there. Um, yep, let's just do that real quick. I don't know if we need another like this. Yeah, I guess I can probably cross the road twice. Let's see what it does with this. Now again, this is going to be the one on the end. Is this objecting here? Bridge, pillar, collision. Yeah, I don't want a bridge. Come on, folks. I don't want a bridge. Let's lower that. 
Oops. Okay. No. Ah, all right. So it's going right around this thing. We're not going to do that. We're going to just cancel the whole thing and go around the quarry instead. Let's click right here. Get ourselves a new estimate, shall we? Okay, 470, 496. See if we go up. 282. That sounds a lot better. All right, let's go with 282. And then we'll move on to this side. And again, just go here and connect it to the station. There we go. 133. Does that get it to be any less if we go up or down? Nope. 133 is our number. Alrighty, so look at that amount. 2,364,000 for this setup. Good thing we had a little bit of a cushion there. We still have the $10 million though uh, as a loan that we can take for buying the trains and that is definitely gonna come in handy. Okay, so we wanna make sure that the stations are connected and several of them are not. So let's just do that really quick. Just wanna make sure that we get the road close enough that you see these little tiny roadlets come out. I'm not gonna add these to the construction costs because they are, really are minimal. Okay, do the same over here though. There we go, seeing that tiny connection. Very nice, very nice. Over here. And then just add. You can make these as pretty or as ugly as you like, by the way. Oh, look at this, it connects on the side. That's very handy, look at that. Okay, and then in town, let's see where the coverage area is. Oh, that's quite nice. It gets every single one of these houses. Oh, that's very tasty. I think that's great. I really feel like like connecting these up and making more blocks, but I'm not gonna do it for now. It'll be fine. Now then, um, the question is, do we wanna put in a second train on this line, i.e. make some passing places, or should we wait until it's kinda up and running? I'm kind of of a mind to say, yeah, let's wait till it's up and running. So let's just do that. Um, but we do need one more thing. We definitely need a train depot. So what I'm gonna do is I think that I wanna add a train depot. Let's see, if we have another track going out this way, we could have a, a line here that takes into account all three of these trains. So I think I'll add this one here this line like this, just make a little bit of a straight section here. And then this, oh no, not there, not there. Over here, thank you. There we go, and we'll do this, and then we're gonna have our crossover section here. All right, weirdly enough, I had a heck of a time with this switch over here um, that would allow uh, both of the rails coming in to come to any of the platforms of the station. I had to uh, flatten this area out and then put two parallel tracks together and then do the cross switches. Uh, so that was a bit of an interesting thing, uh, but otherwise it worked perfectly. Now, what we need here is to build a depot. And I think we will just do that uh, right along the side here. So let's see, we're gonna have this track going there. So we probably want this depot to come in something like here or so, so that it kind of comes off this. Wow, that's a, that's a bit of a hill, isn't it? Let's actually take our train track down there. See, so it kind of comes off there, that seems fine. Okay, so let's have it connecting somewhere off in this direction. Oh, wow, it connects directly, look at that. Okay, we'll take it, sounds great. Now, the other thing that we need to do with our track line here is get some signals going. So we wanna add those because basically this inner loop is gonna be a one-way track all the way around. Now, as we're starting out, we don't need many signals, but I kind of, recommend that you, you put some. Now you're gonna have to pay a monthly maintenance fee for each of these signals, but it's really minimal. And as you start adding more trains, it's just going to be annoying to add them later. What I'm gonna do is make this a one-way track uh, with this setting here. So firstly, you wanna start off with one around each station. I'm just gonna do this, make sure they're all going the same way. There we go, the one there. Now then, before a major crossing like this, we basically only want to do this 
before uh, this thing so that if we have trains that need to go back to the depot, they can turn around on the platform and go back. So I'm not going to put one right here. All right, as we're getting out of the depot, let's put one here. And then we'll start putting some on the tracks, kind of at a train's length apart or a little bit further, perhaps. Well, a lot further. We're not having that long of a trains yet. Wow, this is quite a long stretch here. Uh, there we go. We'll just add them there and then kind of similar here. Let's take them along. And the more signals you have, the faster the trains are going to be able to move along this uh, thing. So for example, if you have this entire stretch unsignaled, uh, this one, so you can see the mouse cursor better. Uh, if you have zero signals, the only way the train can leave this station is once this train is in this station, then it can go all the way and then stop at that signal. But if we put more signals in, let's see, that's not what I want. There we go. If we put more of them in, like over here, then it can go up to here, then it can go up to here, uh, then here, and then finally wait at this one. So it has a much shorter distance to travel to actually start unloading the goods. Now for this station up here, which is going to be delivering tools over to Pepston, we're not going to put any signals on that track because right now we just want to have one train delivering all the stuff. So now let's start our route because that's going to be important. Let's start a brand new line here and we're going to go from the uh, forest area. And let me change the name of this station to Pepston Forest. Okay. Get back to our line. All right, add station, we have Pepston Forest. Then we're gonna go here. I like to rename the names of the stations so that if I have a problem in the future, I can more easily diagnose it by just looking at the station names. All right, and then we're gonna add this one. And this is gonna be uh, Area Tools Factory. Now then, at Pepston Forest, we absolutely want to have a full load. So let's go ahead and do this full load and I think we're going to have a minimum maximum waiting time of one minute. Uh, now if you watch the other tutorial and I highly recommend that you start there, um, the way they wait is if a good arrives on the train it resets the wait time. So this is not the total amount they wait at the station to full load goods. This is how much they wait after each uh, new thing. Uh, arrives onto the train and so it resets the timer. So if you have it waiting for 10 minutes, that's 10 minutes longer than how it takes to load. Anyway, um, I think we're going to leave the Wivenhoe sawmill as it is because above all, we want this sawmill to level up. We want it to get more, um, uh, more production. And sometimes if you have the trains wait and there's only one station right now, it won't uh, get itself to the next level of production. So we're going to leave this as it is, or if you're really concerned about the products making it there, you can wait for a full load and then use the one minute timer. And it's just going to wait until all of the logs are processed. Now it's going to, um, we require two logs per unit of planks. So you're only going to get half back from that whole process. And then it's going to deliver here, uh, at the uh, area tool factory. Now what we want to do is get our trains sorted. Let's rename the name of this line. Train cargo TC Erie. And this is going to be logs, planks. Oh yeah, logs and planks. That's right. We're not going to deliver tools yet. So I'm going to use this. Uh, and we have all the stations there. Go ahead and get our trains going. So let's buy vehicles. Now, the important thing with these vehicles is not to overload your trains. So we're going to add this one. This is the very first train vehicle that we get. Top speed of 40 kilometers an hour. It doesn't go very fast um, and it doesn't have very much power or attractive effort. Um, so we want to make sure that this over here, this good thing, doesn't get down to the lowest, the poor. So we can here see the top speed for slopes flat is 40 kilometers an hour, medium 40 and high is 
28 kilometers an hour. And that's just with the locomotive. If we start adding different cars, like the flat car with side stakes, and notice this takes the logs as well as the planks, that's what we're looking for here. Uh, we're gonna add these cars to our train. So let's watch this very carefully. Let's add, add, it's already at mediocre. Look at that, just one car and it's at mediocre. Okay, keep on going until, oh, now it's poor. We definitely do not want to go with poor. Can't even go on high slopes, not enough power. I really want it to keep a decent speed. So we're going to stay at the very end of mediocre. And we're going to add on a flat surface, we're going to get still 40 kilometers an hour. And I think that's enough. It carries 48 logs at a time. Uh, and then half of that is going to be 24 planks for each load, but that's going to depend on what the train before it picked up or not. So I think this is good. $1.6 million per vehicle. So this is very, very, very expensive. If you don't have a lot of money, you might want to start out with two of these and then one train to take goods over to uh, Pepston. But at the moment, we're gonna we're just gonna break the bank here. So let's borrow $10 million from our bank so that we can add all these trains up. Okay, so we're gonna buy, I wanna buy, let's see, how much is four gonna cost us? Uh, 41, I don't want 41, no thank you game. $6.5 million, that is a lot of money. Wow, um, what if we added six altogether? That's 9.8 million. That's really cutting it close. Now, the reason we would need six is to have two delivery cars uh, for the goods, for the tools. So at the moment, let's just buy four of these uh, and we're gonna buy one of the tools ones. Okay, so let's buy these guys. Oh, scary hitting that button right there. All right, I've gone ahead and added it to the calculator. Now then, let's assign all of these trains to the line. But before we watch them go, remember we have absolutely no more loan. So I do want to buy the train that's going to do the other line. So let's set up a line for that one as well. New line from Iria Tool Factory to Pepston. So we're going to call this one Rail Cargo. Erie to Peps or Pep and then call it tools. I always like to put what we're uh, sending tools or grain or whatever it is. Uh, there we go, tools. And I think what we're gonna do here is we're going to load this full load here. And I think we'll do maximum waiting time of, yeah, let's say 10 minutes. I don't think it's gonna need 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, we want it to, to start moving along. All right, Pepston, actually, you know what? Let's do it at one, one minute. How long is it gonna take for the next train to car to arrive here? That's my question. Let's leave it at three minutes. So it waits for the another, another train. And then if the other one is late, then it'll kind of go off and do its own thing. That seems reasonable because it's gonna pick up a full load probably after two trains. So I think that sounds reasonable. Okay, and that's fine. And at Pepsin Sightings, we're going to pick up nothing, and that's just fine. Okay, let's go to our train depot then and buy a vehicle. Again, we'll add the D1 slash three, and we're gonna get different cars. Looks like the box car can carry our tools for us, so let's add these until we get to a poor rating. There we go. All the tools. 1.642 million dollars. Lots of money. All right, let's buy one. Can we afford another one? We can. Shall we? No, we shouldn't break the bank because we haven't actually added the tracks that are going to support this to our uh, to our line yet. All right, so on the calculator, that gives us a final total of this build. Yeah. 10,574,000. Of course, this is a very robust build and we are going to, yeah, we're gonna do really well with this. So let's start this going and see what happens with this. Let's watch the first train out of the shed. Always a good thing. Hello, little train, you go on, on your journey. Let's go. 
All right, I've zoomed in on Pepston Forest, and here is our very first little train and filled up to the brim with wood. Look at that beautiful detailing on the locomotive. Really, really nice. Okay, so, so far, since it got out of the depot, it has made a negative profit of 120,000. Now we're on our way to the next station over here, Wivenhoe Sawmill. Uh, this station is filling up with logs, hopefully going to be gathered by the next trains. So we can leave that to its thing. Let's click on this one and see how this process is going to go. So again, two logs per uh, unit of planks and we have zero production so far because the AI doesn't compete in this at all. You have to do all of the transporting in this game. All right, train is arriving at the station, as you see. There we're gonna go, and it's gonna unload everything. Wow, it picked up one plank. It had like seconds to make that one plank. <laughs> so this train is not gonna be that interesting to watch because it's gonna put one plank over here in the tool factory. And that's just not very satisfying. So we're going to look at the next train, which is train number one. I'm not sure how they got out of order there, but this one is going to pick up where the factory has been uh, producing stuff. So yeah, they're, they've actually produced everything that they had uh, the materials for. So here we are, we are loading 24 planks and now this is going to get another bonus over there. We actually should repay this to zero to see how much we're earning from this whole process. Because that's a fun thing to uh, to keep track and see, oh, am I earning any money? But of course, we have the half a million dollars from the ship line uh, and tiny, tiny little bit from the road uh, thing where we are delivering the bread in this case. But yeah, look at this, $11 million in investment spent. Holy fuzzy cats. That's a lot of money. And I know that that figure is a little bit different than uh, we quoted, but we had a couple of things we didn't keep track of, nor did we keep track of anything at the end with the zeros. But this was very fiddly. And that's probably why the train is going so slow, because I had to flatten this out and it was a bit of a weird time. So anyway, hopefully the trains will survive this. Very slow slope, uh, but it should be just fine. Here it comes into the station. And it's going to make some money. Let's look at this. Wow. 137,000. Pretty decent. All right, so where is our other train? Looks like we forgot to assign the train to the line. So let's go ahead and click this one right to the tool line and hopefully it's going to have already enough tools waiting here. Let's see. Come on thing, give us some tools. All right, since we did not previously assign it, it, the factory hasn't actually been producing tools. So it has all this lumber stacked up, but it just now started making the tools. So this is going to wait here until all of those are produced. We have quite a bit of uh, tools or lumber stored here and the factory is going to do its best to get all of that processed. Alrighty, after a few more of the lumber trains came in, our train is finally filled up and ready to go. Here we are. This is our first delivery of tools. $401,000. Is that not great or what? Okay, so how many tools do we have now waiting here? Probably quite a lot. We have 30 tools waiting. So we could build another train along this line um, and just make some uh, some sightings and parking spots, uh, basically passage points where the trains can pass each other. Alternatively, we could send the tools to area. Let's see what that's going to be like. We can do this. Let's go ahead and check the um, thing here. And then Erie is going to be quite happy with us as well. Looks like tools are on this side of the city. I guess what we could do is we could make this road connect that one there. Say, okay. All right. So cargo station, let's build one right out here and uh, align it fairly well with the road. Yeah, there we go. 205,000 for this. Okay, so there is one thing that I did forget. Um, 
even with my best intentions of wanting to fill up one train at a time, uh, the game decides where the tools go. So what we're going to do here is we can still keep on sharing the platform or we can build another platform or we can just change the schedule. And I think that's probably the best option at the moment is to go into this one and just say, pick up whatever is there. And that's just fine. Um, and um, that way we can share one platform for all of this. I think this one is going to need another train. This is quite heavy. I did add a couple more of the trains to the lumber line. So we can see that here we have, let's see, six trains now on this line. And I did add the uh, truck station here right by here so that these trucks can pick up the tools when they're needed and they deliver right down here. The line looks just like this. It's quite simple uh, so that we can get all those tools delivered. And as you can see, the money is just pouring in. Very, very nice to see that happen. So what are the next steps here? I think I'm going to add uh, passing places on this line here. All right, I have added three different passing places with a signal at each end pointing outward. Um, that's so that the trains can stop at the end of each of these sections. I added one by each station and then one in the middle. And let's go and clone that train real quick so that we can have the extra uh, transport there. There we go. This is our pep tools. Yep, train five. Let's duplicate you. Yes, go ahead. And there we go. Train nine is now on the line. So hopefully we can get, oh my goodness, 103 tools are waiting at this station, ready to get going to their new homes. Now, what is the next stage of this? The next stage is going to be a time warp and we're going to dial up the speed just for the tutorial. Uh, the reason to stop the speed, of course, is so that you can stay in the era as long as you like. Um, now we're going to go to a particular point in time where we just get the very, very first locomotive upgrade. And hopefully that will also give us some time to get these numbers evened out so we can actually see how much we're making every year. Ah, now we have proper dates here. Excellent. I'm quite happy about that. All right. Look what we just got. Two new vehicles are available. We get the Bavarian passenger car and more importantly, the Borsig, which is $329,000. Now then, um, this is going to give us a huge amount of income. Just that extra five miles an hour, I think is going to be much better. Plus it has more pulling power. This has 66 kilowatts of pulling power. It is a little bit more expensive per year, but that is going to definitely make up uh, over time. So right now we've been getting between 1 million and 1.5 million a year. So we'll kind of remember that number. I haven't repaid any of the loan yet. And what we want to do is get all of these trains, um, their new locomotives. Now the cheapest way to do this is send all of the trains to a depot. Um, that's easier said than done though. I guess what we could do is get these trains on this line going, uh, to a depot in this direction. That would work pretty well. Uh, in fact, maybe we should do that. That's, that might be a really good idea is just to get them on a track here to go to depot. Now the reason I'm building it here is so that they can also go and get back on the line they're meant to. There we go. This is going to be for the lumber trains. They're the most difficult, I think, to get back. So we'll build our... This can be temporary. We don't have to leave this, but we can if we like. So we'll put that right there and then tell all of our trains to go back to the depot. So let's go on the vehicle thingy majingy and select TC logs planks. Uh, and we want all of them to go to the depot. Yep. Send all of them. Go, go, go. Boom. They are back in the depot. So they should be just traveling there. It's going to cause quite a bit of loss of income while they're there, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Those are those. And I think I I completely misnamed these. Oh dear, these should be TCs and not RCs. That's okay though. We'll send this one to the depot. Yes. 
And this one, where's the other one? I'm so naughty, I have to go and uh, replace these, the names of these, yes, send those back. And so you see all of these guys going back into the depot. Now, if I were to replace these, you basically replace every single car, and that is definitely not what we want. What we can do is select the train and then select edit vehicle right here. So instead of it costing that much money, right now we have modify for zero. If we delete this one, well, we don't wanna add this one first cause that's gonna put it at the very end and it won't shift it upward after we delete this one. Let's delete this engine. We would get 91,000 back for that, which is not a lot. But if we add the Borsig, then it's gonna cost us 238,000. So you can go through all of your trains this way and save a ton of money. Uh, just make sure that you click on a train that is actually in the station because this one, I tried to click on this one and it's not actually there right now. Unfortunately, you can't select multiples and use the wrench on them, but that's okay. In the beginning of the game, it might be worth it to save a few bucks and just do this manually yourself. So that's an important upgrade to this. So I'm gonna replace all of these and then show you the balance sheet after we get them all replaced. All right, I've run the trains for quite some time and as you can see, our profits have gone way, way up. We had a few months where we had negatives because of the trains having to get back on the tracks after they were replaced. But man, look at this 1.6 million, 823,000 and then 1.8 million per Per year. That extra speed does definitely add up and uh, sometimes it's really worth it. I think it's more worth it if it adds like 10 miles an hour rather than five, but I think we're still seeing the benefits of that. Okay, so where do you go from here? Um, I think that's, that's the question. You now have this huge transport network that is gonna gain you some money. It looks like we have nothing, but we've almost paid off the entire $10 million loan. All right, so the next thing, consider a relatively long distance run for oil and fuel and that's gonna net you a mountain of money if you can get that sorted. Um, we can see parts of that system here. There's an oil well, and then this is a oil refinery where it refines oil, uh, crude oil into regular oil. And then this oil goes to a fuel refinery and it makes it flamey. And then the flamey stuff goes to a city. Now, if you have a very long line for this, you will get uh, some decent profits on trains. Um, another thing that you can do is start creating your passenger transport systems uh, so that you can grow your towns bigger and they will demand even more goods. Um, with the boats and train systems running, this gives you an excellent profit base to do anything your heart desires. So uh, I think that's gonna do it for us for this tutorial. Please come to our Discord if you need any help or check out the other tutorials on my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.